Hello, this is Overlord Bo, back with another ship review video, and today we'll be looking at the new Tier 9 Pan-Asian battleship, the Soon Yatsen. Now, the Soon Yatsen will be released with a Lunar New Year event in patch 12.0, which should be tomorrow or the following week. Now, it should be sold in the armory for 19,300 doubloons. You also have a chance to get the ship for free in the upcoming Prime Gaming Drop, uh, which is here, which is on Twitch. Uh, so if you have Twitch, if you have Prime, uh, you can get, you have a possibility of getting for free from an item that's included in that. So definitely check that out. So you, you can get it for free potentially, or pay the 19,300 for the ship. So now I'll be going over my recommended captain build, module setup, followed by the ship stats. And finally, I'll give my thoughts about our performance overall. Now, first up is the captain build and upgrades will be shown on the top, right? Now this yacht. The Janssen is takes a typical BB tank build, so no surprises here for the build overall. Now let's talk about the ship stats, starting with their armor and survivability. The armor will be shown on the top right, so you guys can take a look at that while I talk about the armor. The ship has a 32mm bow slash stern with a 220mm partial icebreaker bow, with a 60mm deck armor, a 375mm belt armor, with an 80,900 HP pool with a 35% torpedo protection. Now, the Soon Yatsen is essentially the stock uh, Soyuz hull with the 457 uh, millimeter guns. Now, this makes her a very tanky BB as her 60 millimeter deck armor shrugs off all cruiser HE. Now, BBs also have to get close to penetrate her belt armor, but if they do, then the Yatsen is, is easy to set it all in just sitting duck. Now, while played properly, she is extremely difficult ship to kill. Uh, moving on to the main armaments, you have six 457mm slash 48 guns with a 192 kilometer range with a 26 second base reload. With a 30 second 180 turret uh, and 180 degree turret traverse, it can fire 28 degrees off of the bow and 28 degrees off of the stern. The HE shell damage is 6500 with a 76mm HE pen, a 45% uh, percent fire chance, and a 90k HE DPM. Now you do have an AP shell damage of 13,000 with a 31 millimeter overmatch with a 45 through 60 degree ricochet angle and it has 180k AP DPM. You also get battle cruiser accuracy and the dispersion will be shown on the top right. Now the, the Soon Yatsen's guns are remarkably similar to Georgia's having six improved accuracy and a uh, 31 millimeter overmatch. However, that's where the simulators end. Uh, the Yatsen shells deal poor damage for their caliber, and most 406mm shells uh, have more damage, sadly. Now, only having 6 guns can lead to unfortunate misses, even with better dispersion. And the 19.2km range is also short, and she will struggle in high tier matches. Still, the guns have potential and should not be underestimated. Now, moving on, let's talk about our secondaries. You have six twin 152mm uh, guns with 2200 HE shell damage, a 5.5 second reload time, a 7km range, and a 12% fire chance. Now, you do have normal secondary dispersion, which is AK pretty bad, uh, as normal host secondaries are not very effective, so definitely do not build into them. For anti air defense, you have three inner plus one outer for the flak. Uh, the anti air range is 5.8, with the outer DPS being 81 and the mid being 410 DPS. Now, even with the DFAA, the Yatsen's anti air is, isn't is all that impressive at all. Her, her, mid, her mid range anti air can chew up planes uh, after they launch their rockets or torpedoes. It's still useful against dive bombers, but you aren't stopping attacks, just making it more costly for the CV in the end. As for her anti-sub capabilities, you get a maximum charges of 2, with the number of depth charges per attack is 2, and the damage is 4200, with a 30 second reload, with the 10 kilometer range. Now these structures are the same as other tier 9 BBs, low damage, but better than running up to the submarine. Now for maneuverability, we have a 28 knot max speed, with a 950 meter uh, turning radius, and a 14.9 second rudder shift time. Uh, Yatsen is somewhat clumsy for a tier 9 BB, having Yamato levels of speed and maneuverability, which is bleh. Now, she doesn't turn well nor go anywhere fast, but it's understandable for how durable she is. 
For concealment, she has a surface detection of 16.7 kilometer base, an aerial detection of 13 kilometers base. If you build into it all the way, the surface detection is 13.5 kilometers and the aerial detection is 10.5 kilometers. Now, the Yatsen's concealment is relatively poor, uh, making it hard to get close without being detected. Combined with her short gun range, the Yatsen can suffer in long range matches where she can't safely close the distance. Finally, for her consumables that are available to her, uh, she has a standard battleship damage control party with a 15 second immunity period and 80 second reload time and have infinite uses. Uh, the standard defensive AA has four base charges, five with superintendent, uh, plus 50% continuous damage, plus 300% flak damage, a 40 second active time and an 80 second reload time. Uh, it also has a standard battleship repair party, which heals 14 through 17% uh, of the total HP, uh, which is roughly around 12,500 uh, HP if you have the flag on. Uh, he uh, has four charges base, five with ERE, and an 80 second reload time. The Asun does use the standard BP consumables and not the Russian ECP version, so definitely take note of that in, uh, if you're uh, trying to compare it to the uh, Soyuz. Now, my overall impressions of the Yatsen uh, has a low skill floor and an average skill ceiling. Uh, the Soon, the Soon Yatsen is the Tier 9 Pan-Asian battleship, sort of a Soyuz hull with the nerf Kremlin guns. Uh, basically, she's a less tanky Soyuz that can overmatch 30 uh, millimeter, uh, 31 millimeter armor on a Tier 10 cruiser. Otherwise, her gameplay is fairly typical for a battleship. Uh, shoot broadside cruisers, hit DDs when possible, stay angled tank for your team, etc. You know, the typical battleship. Now, her ideal combat range is below 16 kilometers. Uh, the closer, the better, uh, where she can put her durability to good use. As usual, be in a kind of position until you know it's safe to get close, then you just charge in and have fun with the rest. Now, for broadside targets are ideal, but battling cruisers are also good. Uh, don't be afraid to get down to 12 kilometers. You have the durability to spare to use this to get more accurate shots. Now, once you weaken the enemy, push in and support your team to take the caps is a pretty uh, notorious, it's a pretty good thing to do in this ship. Now, overall, the, the Soon Yatsen is a decent BB, though frustrating at times due to her six-gun arrangement. Uh, it's not a bad pick, but the Baji is probably a better choice if you had to buy a Pan-Asian battleship. But since the Baji isn't always available, uh, since it's during only during special events, I would definitely say that the Sun Yatsun is a very good uh, ship to, uh, to be able to get for the 19,003 inch balloons. And I'll explain a little bit later on why. Now for the randoms, I'd say it's average to above average. Now for ranked, I'd say it's about mediocre. Uh, the Sun Yatsun is tanky, but that's about it. She definitely struggles against the meta ships like Musashi and Georgia. And Soyuz is better at tier 9 as a tier 9 cruiser that has as the 30 millimeter overmatch isn't useful. And Soyuz accuracy is better for close range. Now for prime battles is a possible niche. Uh, could use as a tanky beep, uh, push BB, but Soyuz is generally better for this role. Now again, you can get this ship for 19,300 doubloons. It is a pretty expensive uh, tier 9 battleship, uh, but it is for the pan Asian. Um, line i'm sorry for the pan asian country so and you could use it as a crew trainer for the future uh just throwing that there could be for that and also as a credit farmer since tier 9 premiums do have a uh, usually have an enhanced credit bonus so you could use that to farm some more uh credits doing that definitely could uh, do that for the future uh just throwing that out there maybe it could be a good thing maybe not totally up to you in the end there so just throwing that out there now, overall in this match, now overall when I was playing this ship, I played it really passive. I didn't play it overly aggressive due to the fact that the ship guns, um, they don't have like a super high DP, you only do only well, have six. So I played it a little bit more passive compared to like how I would with the Soyuz. Um, with the Soyuz, you do have a little bit more guns, a little bit more DPM. So in, in the Soyuz, I'd be a little bit more aggressive, but I played this ship a little bit more passive than I normally would. But this ship can be played a lot more aggressive than how I was doing it. This ship is incredibly tanky and can take a crap ton of damage if you know what you're doing properly. Um, pretty much it can it can do a lot of farm, it can do a lot of tanking, you can get a lot of potential damage, be a really good support for your team. 
Now, I did play a few matches with this ship where I was up to it in super ship tier. Now, I did have issues fighting Condes, which... Ugh, I think any tiny tier 9 sh battleship will have tier issues with Condes. I think this is normal at this point. Condes are kind of just a nightmare fuel at this point. Uh, when I did fight other, like, super ships, I did... I was able to tank them a little bit better, but Condes were in and out. The Condes were definitely... Uh, my suffering uh, in that particular point, uh, for sure. I was definitely suffering with the Condes the most in the end. Now, again, uh, with the tier 9 battleships, you do normally get an enhanced uh, credit bonus, which is really, really nice. So normally, I'd recommend buying a tier 9 uh, battleship or a cruiser uh, in the future to be able to get the nice credit bonus. Uh, or the tier 8. It's more of like a personal choice. But I do, I do like the Soon, uh, Soon Yatsen. I do enjoy the ship. It is a lot of fun to play. Whenever I played it, I didn't always get the highest amount of damage, but I did have a, like a consistent, like being able to survive and tank a lot of the damage that was being fired at me, which is really, really good in the current meta where a lot of battleships are just gonna get farmed over and over and over and over again. So if you're looking for like that Russian tankiness, but for a different nation like the Pan. A pan Asian, which you can use to train um, your commanders to 21 points, which is really, really useful for the future of like new lines coming out, or if you're trying to just grind out the current lines, It'd definitely be a very useful tool for that. But it's totally up to you. It is 19,300 doubloons. It is an expensive buy. I'm trying to think of like the current buys right now. I know that right now you can buy like, uh, let me think. I know you can currently buy the Awami, the Kearsarge, the Palmern, I think, uh, Marco, Marco Polo. There, there's a few, there's a few tier nines you can currently buy, and there's ones you really can't get, especially like special events or Santa containers, uh, like the Baji, the Georgia. If, uh, if you guys can think of any others, uh, I would greatly appreciate if you guys put down in the comments. But this ship, I think, is a pretty good buy or if you're just looking for a credit grinder or a potential commanding farmer for the Pan-Asians. Definitely is a fun ship for that. Now, again, the Soy, I think overall the Soyuz is a little bit better than this ship due to the Soyuz having a higher DPM than this ship. Pretty much, I consider this ship's guns kind of like the Georgia with... Like, the, the, the guns are very similar to how George's handle. Uh, sometimes it can be really good. Sometimes they're really trolly. But the thing is, is that these guns don't have a super high AP DPM. So, you can have... The guns are similar to George's, but they don't feel exactly the same due to the fact they have lower alpha. So, just throwing that out there. Like, that's that's why, like... There was a lot of times when I shot, like, ships and, like, get citadels. I was like, man, that... That could have been a dev strike if that was like Georgia. But the thing is, is that Georgias are really hard to get. I think the only way you can get them at this point uh, is Santa containers. There is no Black Friday version of the Georgia. You can only get it from Santa containers you have to gamble for. So I don't know when you would ever be able to do it again since the Christmas season just ended. You probably have to wait a whole nother year to be able to do it. But between this ship and a Georgia, I would definitely recommend the Georgia over it. Georgia's a lot more maneuverable. The guns are do a, a hit a lot harder. And also, if you want to build a Georgia 4 secondaries, you are able to do that. But I generally don't recommend doing that. It is a more of a personal preference, as you can read in the chat. I was telling this guy, he was saying, he was asking if the Georgia's guns were nerfed, which uh, they were not. They have not been touched at all ever since the release um and the guns are amazing on the georgia and i was asking him how did you build it and he said he built a secondary and i was asking specific questions like did you build a mod did you build it for the secondary modules did you get a main gun and pretty much i confirmed that he built it for secondaries and i was like yeah uh, if you're having issues with the guns just build it into the main guns and it'll be just fine is how i would recommend it to him but this match, I didn't really get to do a lot of damage, sadly. I did do a good job of holding the flank uh, on my side. I did a really, really good job doing that. For some reason, whenever I was playing this ship, I did about 10, 
battles in this ship 12 like 10 11 battles i didn't really get to do a lot of damage i was a lot more of the times i was more of acting like an anchor for my flank if you know what i mean uh you know how normally the russian bbs you kind of play it like in clan battles kind of like an anchor you don't use it as like a heavy like you can use it i use them as a heavy pusher uh, but the thing is, this, this ship has less guns, so I use it more as just like a giant anchor where they can't push you really hard and they kind of have to respect your presence, but you're also not putting out a crap ton of damage. That's kind of how I recommend it. Like, yes, this ship is really tanky and it will hit hard, but it's not going to hit as hard as, say, like a Soyuz, uh, since the Soyuz does have more guns and is, but it is a little bit more. It does have a little bit more DPM than the and the yachts and so if you do want to get the soyuz you can it is a tech tree you don't have to buy it you can just get the soyuz if you want it is free you just have to do the tech tree so there you go if you want to do that instead of getting the yachts and it's totally up to you there but since there's probably more, more pan asian lines coming out in the future i would definitely recommend maybe like getting some kind of credit grinder or like kind of like a crew trainer for them. Not a, not a credit grinder, a crew trainer would be really nice. So I definitely recommend getting this, getting a, some kind of crew trainer so you can do this. And normally the higher tier you go, the better the crew training and stuff will be. Like the higher tier you go, the more commander XP you're earning, the more credits you're earning. Uh, normally I always recommend tier eights or nines for that since tier eights and nines do get the enhanced credit bonus already. Uh, the premiums, of course. Uh, they already give you that little extra bonus. It's really, really nice to get that nice credit grinding and stuff so you can grind down more lines. But again, 19,300 balloons is a lot to throw into something. So I wouldn't really highly, 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 highly suggest getting this ship. But again, you can if you want. It, it's more of a personal preference if you want. Pretty much if you, if you, if you want a tanky tier 9 pan asian soyuz with little less dpm with georgia accurate guns is the best way i can put it that is pretty much the most accurate like one of the most accurate ways i can put it uh, i'm not sure how everyone else is gonna like the ship or not how the other ccs that are be doing videos on um you guys can let me know as well if you've watched other content creator videos on this specific ship and you let me know what they think i'd love to hear other people's opinions about the ship if you guys like it if you don't i would greatly appreciate that i would like to hear guys opinions about it um thankfully whenever i got this ship it was in its final state thankfully uh compared to the hector whenever i had that ship i didn't have it in its final state so that was kind of a disaster there so it was kind of a it was kind of a disaster, so we'll have to see, I guess. So, we'll see. <sighs> but yeah, this this specific match isn't going to be very long, and you're going to see why. I want you guys to very carefully watch that middle section of the mini-map. I want you to watch those two battleships that are just leaving. And I want you to see what happens. You're gonna you're gonna see what happens in about five minutes. This was this is by far one of the quickest matches I've ever had, and it's pretty hilarious how and how it ended. Like this match was actually going really well. I was fighting, you'll 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 see what I mean. But I was fighting this. This was a tier eleven match, so I was doing really well in the match. I was handling it really well, and you'll see what happens. Now, if you see that car not right there, that's just sitting bow in. Uh, do not play the Karnot like that. The Karnot is not meant to be bow in. For some reason, I see a lot of people play the Karnot like that, and I really don't know why. The Karnot specializes in... It's its a French cruiser. It specializes in maneuverability, being able to wiggle around, has the strong French HE, and has the good AP guns as well for the French. Um, so the fact that it's just sitting there bow in is definitely not a good thing for it and it, it should be using all of its guns wiggling around and stuff and yeah this curve first just oh, she just he died 
he oh lord that dude died way too fast i don't i don't know why that is apps that was that was embarrassing i don't know i don't know why he just over pushed that but he got absolutely devastated by the yamato yamato satsuma and the ban ham he just got absolutely slapped you know, it was just it was just a disaster pile but yeah, as you can see, the Karnot's still just sitting there, and it just, uh, I don't know. But as you can see about those damage numbers, they're a little bit low. If that was like a, like I said, if that was a Georgia, that'd be at least a, probably like a 9 or 10k salva right there. But Georgia, like I said, does hit a lot harder than the uh, Yatsen does. It has a higher AP DPM. It is kind of a disaster in that regard but yeah as you can see everyone's a little bit heavy a little bit heavy on this flank a little bit heavy by the time like right around here i'm starting to want to push in but as you can see there's an ismo and a schleif in there and i'm always weary of pushing into schleifens especially with how many secondaries they have and how many torps they have it's never a good sign to do so yep and here he goes the car not got pushed out by the submarine yeah, he just got shoved by that baleo baleo or baleo wow but yeah the poor fella he's about to get slapped by me and the other bb Oh lord, it's a disaster. But you guys can probably guess what's about to happen soon. Because I already hinted at it earlier. Something's about to happen. Because there are also two submarines in a div. Just throwing that out there. There is also two submarines in a div. And they kind of were left just roaming around. So I wonder where they would go. I wonder, I wonder where two submarines would go. And they went to the gap. Yup, and there is no one near it. Except for the Yamato and the Satsuma. Which just, uh, yeah, they didn't stay in the, they abandoned the middle and left the middle uncontended with two submarines in a div together. Um, yeah. That was, uh... And look how fast they were getting that cap, dude. I think there had to be three of them in there. with it that fast? No. Then there's no way. There's no way that that DD got in there. No, I'm looking at the minimap. There's no way. Well, eh, maybe. Maybe he could have. Maybe. Maybe he could have rotated quick enough. Maybe. But at this point, it's... Like, it's, it's already, like, almost halfway, and the battleships are finally turning around. Like, nope, it's over. And at this point, I already knew it's over, and, uh, I even said I don't expect... I didn't expect our two BBs in mid to rotate over. And I spelled expect wrong. Yep, yep, like, professional, I spelled, I spelled expect wrong. True professional bow, I spelled expect wrong. But, yeah, I didn't expect both the BBs to just... You know, rotate off of the mid. That's been a common occurrence recently that I've been noticing a lot. If you guys, if you guys noticed how I've, I've had this issue too, I've done it myself. Each the team will normally leave the middle uncontended at all, like at all. There will be no cruiser, no BB, no DD, no nothing in mid. They'll legit just leave it blank and just go to the flanks. So if there's like a submarine match or a D that just goes right down the middle, they'll legit just get a free cap. Like they'll just legit get it for free, which is exactly what happened. They just got a free cap. It was an easy win for them. They didn't have to do a dang thing. This was by far one of the quickest matches I ever had. That was just not like a blowout. It was just a capture the capture the base one of the quickest I've ever seen. It was pretty insane. But yep, yeah, that's gonna be it. If you guys have any questions or concerns, definitely in the comments down below. But yep, yeah, this was Overlord or Bow. Thank y'all for watching. But yeah, I'll talk to y'all later. <laughs>